Hello and welcome to How Can Exponents Be Fractions? Today we're going to look at just that idea. If we have an exponent that's a fraction, what does that mean? And what is that? If I have x to the one-half power, what does that mean? So let me start with a question. What is 9 to the one-half power? If we could figure this out, that would help us to figure out what x to the one-half is. Now I'm going to start by thinking about it this way. What if I square this? I don't know what this number is, but if I took 9 to the one-half and I square it, what would that be? Well, power to power, I know when I've got power raised to a power, the 9 is a base. What do I do to these exponents? I would multiply them. 2 times a half is 1. So this would equal 9 to the first. Oh, okay. So I don't know what this thing is, but if I square it, it's equal to 9. So if I multiply it times itself, it equals 9. Okay, so whatever this thing is, whatever number this is, it is a number that times itself equals 9. I wish there was a number that times itself equals 9. Is there a number? What, what number? Did it, wait, 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 wait. 3 is a number that times itself equals 9. We know that this is 3 times itself equals 9. And 3 is the square root of 9, right? So really what we're saying is that the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 equals 9. So 9 to the 1 half power equals 3, which is the square root of 9. So somehow this 9 to the 1 half equals the square root. Okay, well what about other numbers? 5 doesn't have a nice easy 3. So what about 5? If I square 5 to the 1 half, that gives me 5 to the first. So again, this thing, whatever it is, it's the thing that times itself equals 5. Oops. I made a big mistake here. That's not a 5, that's a 2. The thing that times itself equals 5. So again, what times itself equals 5? The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 equals 5. So again, 5 to the 1 half equals the square root of 5. That's looking to me like x to the 1 half is the same as the square root of x. Let's think about it a different way. Okay? Mathematicians basically wanted to say, okay, this square root of 2, we know what it is. It's some number 1.41, something, something, something. But could we write it as 2 to the something power? If we could, what would that something power be? So we know that the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 equals 2. But if we write it as a something power, then we'd have this 2 to the something power times 2 to the something power equals 2. OK, let's use what we know about exponents. When multiplying common bases, add the exponents. So this is 2x power. And what's the exponent on this? Just a 1. We know that if the bases are the same, this raised to something and this raised to something, if these are the same, then those somethings must be equal to each other. So therefore, 2x must be 1. So dividing by 2, x must be 1 half. So going back to our original question, the square root of 2 is equal to 2 to the what power? It must be to the 1 half power. So 2, as a square root, is the same as 2 to the 1 half power. I hope this is making sense. Slow it down and rewatch it if that didn't follow for you. So this is, our, this is our thinking here. That x to the 1 half power, what this means, is the square root of x. We're not dividing by 2. We're not cutting it in half. We're actually taking the square root. Okay, well, what about... If it's not a square root, what about something like this? In a radical, we could also take the cube root times itself three times, and that would equal two also, right? This number here in a radical is called the root or called the index. Make sure you write down those words. That's called the root or called the index. The number underneath right here that's called the radicand, R-A-D-I-C-A-N-D, radicand. That's what those things are called. 
And we know that the cube root of 2 is the thing that times itself times itself equals 2. Okay, so then how would this work? If we've got 2 times itself, or this, the cube root of 2, times the cube root of 2, times the cube root of 2. Let's, uh, we don't know what this exponent would be. Let's call it y. 2 to the y is going to be this. So we'll go 2 to the y, 2 to the y. We don't, 2 to the something equals cube root of 2. And we're trying to figure out what that something is. Okay? So then as we multiply these together, we know by rules of exponents, this is 3y, because we add the exponents, y plus y plus y. And the exponent there is 1. Again, if the bases are equal to each other, their exponents must be equal to each other. So y must be 1 third, which tells me that back up here, if we have the cube root of 2, and we want to make that equal to 2 to the something power, that something power is 1 third. So that's how some of these fractions can work. All right, let's look at some more. What if it's not as simple as this? Okay, we've got something times something times something equals 2 to the fourth. What if we change this number? So now this is not just the cube root of 2, it's something else. What must that exponent be? Well, again, this is going to be 2 to the 3x power, right? x plus x plus x equals 2 to the fourth. If the bases are equal, the exponents must be equal. And x must be 4 thirds. Okay. Well, here it gets a little different because now we've got this different kind of a, a thing. We've got a fractional exponent. Okay. So let's come back up here and think, well, 2 to the x times itself times itself. That means 2 to the third we said was equal to 2 to the fourth. If I want to find out what is this 2 to the x, then I need to get rid of the cubing. This is called cubing when you raise it to the third power. And the opposite operation, or the inverse operation of cubing something is to take the cube root. So I'm going to take the cube root of both sides, which you can always do to an equation. You can take the square root of both sides or the cube root of both sides, just to cancel with this cubing. And what I'm left with now is 2 to the x equals cube root of 2 to the fourth. Okay, this is a little bit weird now. I know that this x is 4 thirds power, so 2 to the 4 thirds power must mean the cube root of 2 to the fourth. Do we notice some things that are similar in the numbers? We've got 2s and 3s and 4s. And do you see how these things go and where they go? Okay. We talk about the number in the denominator being the root. If you think about it like a flower, okay, here's the ground. Underneath are the roots. On top of the flowers, they make them grow. So these things, the top number, the numerator, makes it get bigger. This is the exponent. The number underneath is the roots. That's going to make it smaller. So this number is the root. This number is the exponent. And so we can kind of write two different rules here. This is how it looks. x to the a over b power is equal to the b root of x to the a power. Or you could also write it like this. The b root of x to the a power. Both of these are true. Both of these are, are valid. And both of these we will use. You need to know both of these formulas. Okay, let's do one example. Here's how it looks. On the calculator, if I type in 8 to the 2 thirds power, it's going to tell me 4. Okay? Why is it 4? Well, if we go off of our two rules, it means this. 8 to the 2 thirds power. I could write it as the cube root of 8 squared under here. Or, by the second way, I could write it as the cube root of 8 squared. Okay, so now, cube root of 8 squared is 64. Cube root of 64, what times itself times itself equals 64? 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds equals 4. I could do it this way. Or I could do it this way. 
cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Either way, I get 4. What I need you to understand is that when you raise something to a power like this, this is the root, this is the exponent. Okay, here's one for you to try. I want you to try 25 to the 3 over 2 power. Pause the video and try it. Now here's the answer. This means the square root of 25 to the third. Or I could do square root of 25 to the third. Which way looks easiest? Do I know 25 times 25 times 25? No, this is going to give me a huge generous number. I don't really like this way. This way, I do know what the square root of 25 is. That is 5. And I could do 5 to the third, which is 125. Now, 25 times 25 times 25 is going to be a huge number. But if you took the square root of it, you would also get 125. We need to choose which way is easier and just do the easiest way. Hopefully you got an answer of 125 and you've learned what you needed to. Have a great day.